Hey, what is going on, guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the Thursday night football showdown state with the San Francisco 49ers and the Tennessee Titans. But before I get in the video, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings. If you guys are playing NBA DFS, make sure to check out my video breaking down the five game slate tonight. Well, maybe five game slate, might be less. Uh, with uh, the crazy COVID protocols that we've had last few weeks. Um, if you guys aren't able to watch these videos, I also upload on Apple Podcasts. The link is down below. It's called the DK DFS Show. If you're interested in signing for premium content, off that on patreon.com, cover NFL and NBA, the main and the showdown sites. I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Thrive Fantasy. Guys, Thrive Fantasy is, is offering really big contests for NFL on Sunday. So a $40,000 prize pool, $20 entry. Um, so how it works is it's a player prop site where you're actually building out a lineup on player props. So you pick 10 of the 20 options, the less probable the prop is to occur, the more points you receive. Um, and yeah, again, there's a lot of game theory involved because the less probable, obviously the, the more points. So um, I, I like it. It's a nice change of pace from DraftKings. So if you guys want to try it out, make sure to sign up and use my code DKDFS, DKDFS, all one word. You get 100% match up to $100. So basically you deposit using my code, $100, you get a free $100 to play with on this site. And uh, as always, I want to thank you guys for your continued support on these NFL videos. Make sure if you do enjoy the NFL content, just to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. All right, guys, so let's talk about uh, Thursday Night Football. So first, let's take a look at the Vegas odds here. Um, here, I got to refresh Bavada. Come on. <clears throat> okay, so it's a 44 over under, and the 49ers are currently three and a half point favorites. So let's start off on the San Francisco side. Now, let's take a look at snap counts in the most recent game here for the 49ers. So, Jeff Wilson played basically the entire game, 88% of the snaps. We do have Elijah Mitchell already confirmed out, and Michael Hasty only got a couple of snaps. At wide receiver, you had Brandon Ayuk played 98% of the snaps, Debo Samuel 81%, and Jawan Jennings played 44% of the snaps. And at tight end, George Kittle played 96% of the snaps, Warner played 23%. So... Uh, on the San Francisco side, at the top, we have Debo Samuel is priced up to 11.6K. Now, the issue I have with Debo is um, since he's been uh, a lot more involved uh, in the ground game, the targets have gone way down, you know, last five weeks. Five, two, four, one, and five targets. Not great for a guy of this price point. Now, sure, you know, the, the rushing floor um, is good to see. He's getting, you know, some around five to eight carries a game. But he's also gotten pretty lucky with the touchdown variance, right? If you take a look at his rushing carries or uh, rushing touchdowns, he has, what, four, six touchdowns on the ground in the last five games. Um, that's probably not going to continue. Now, sure, right, he's getting a lot of those carries near the red zone, but um, we can't expect him to average over a touchdown on the ground every single game. So I think he's an interesting fade here, and I think he'll be relatively popular um, after, you know, putting, if box score watchers think we'll look at this and, and, and get to Debo Samuel. But um, I think he makes her an interesting fade, uh, honestly, tomorrow. George Kittle is priced up to 11.2K. Um, I mean, last three weeks, 12, 15, and six targets. Uh, and the game against Atlanta, they were playing from ahead, so they didn't really have to air it out uh, that much in the second half. Um, I think he is uh, a really, really safe play, probably going to get you close to double digit targets and does have uh, you know, a guy that can look to in the red zone as well. Uh, Jimmy G is at 10.4K, so uh, he's played pretty well. Um, he's, he's been more of a game manager. He doesn't really have insane upside, but he'll probably get your you know 15-ish fancy points, which I think makes him a fair play, definitely a safer option on the showdown. Again, Elijah Mitchell, as I mentioned, he did just get ruled out, so he will uh, not be playing in this one. Brandon Ayuk at 8K, so... Um, you know, he has been playing majority of the game. If you take a look at snap counts, he played 98% of the snaps. No, sure, he did only have two targets last week, but they didn't really have to pass that much in the second half. So I like Ayuk. I think he's, you get him at a nice discount from Debo Samuel, and he's still a guy that has a good amount of upside. Now, Jeff Wilson's at 5.2K with Elijah Mitchell already ruled out. I think he makes for a great value. He had 21 carries last game, two catch and two targets. So I think he looks great at his price. Juwan Jennings at 5K, so he should be working as the number three wide receiver. Five and six targets the last couple games. I think it makes him a decent option, um, but would have wished he was a little bit cheaper, right? For a guy that uh, probably gets, you know, around half the game, maybe a little bit less, the price is definitely up a bit. 
And then uh, Robbie Gold is fine. Again, the kickers are always in play on the showdown slate. Um, and you've seen a lot of kickers in the winning lineups of late in the show. And so a lot of these have been pretty ugly. So uh, definitely considering Robbie Gold, therefore, for he is uh, a solid kicker in the NFL. As far as the 49ers defense go, 3.8K on the road, I think more of just a tournament play. Um, if you take a look at their box score, like they've gone for, they've been averaging close to 10 fancy points a game last five games. So for tournaments, sure, definitely viable. Use check at 1.8K, the fullback. Um, I mean, he will get a carry every once in a while uh, near the goal line. He had a touchdown last week. Um, he's been averaging around two targets a game. So at this really cheap price point, I think it's doable. I, I do. I mentioned Michael Hasty at 1.2K. So only played 5% of the snaps. That was definitely disappointing. Um, more of just a dart throw. You're probably going to need something to happen to Jeff Wilson for him to become um, valuable there. And that's really it. Like Sherfield, I believe he played nine, five snaps total, 9%. So he did have one target, but um, not much else here. And Warner was the backup tight end. He's $200. But 49ers are, are pretty easy to break down because, um, you know, condensed snap counts, condensed target shares, right? Jeff Wilson basically playing the entire game running back. Kittle basically playing the entire game at tight end. You have three wide receivers basically playing majority of the or the top two playing majority of the game. Joining uh Juwan Jennings playing about half the game. So pretty easy team to break down. On the Tennessee side. So let's take a look at snap counts here. Um so running back a little bit tricky. They were in a three-headed monster. Foreman played 39% of the snaps. Hillier 36. McNichols played 29% of the snaps. A wide receiver, so. Westbrook Akina played 89% of snaps. Hollister surprisingly played 70%. Chester Rogers only 35%. Uh, Racy McMath. What uh, again? That that is just not a real person. I know I've said that a couple times. With NBA players, there's just no chance that's that's a real person. It's a made up person. Um, and Julio Jones did get injured dealing with a hamstring injury as he's been basically this entire year. I don't think he plays in this one. Hamstrings are tough. You usually take a couple weeks to heal. Um, and at tight end, they do run three tight ends. Swaim, Pruitt, and Ferkser all got out there. Swaim played the most, 74%. Pruitt, 34%. Ferkser, um, 21%. So we'll start with Ryan Tannehill at 10K. Um, a guy that does have a little bit of rushing upside. Kind of like Jimmy G, though. Just more of a game manager. I mean, most likely gets you mid-teens fancy points, which, like uh, like Jimmy G, I think makes him a safe play in the show on slate. Now, we got to keep an eye on A.J. Brown news. He's expected to be... Uh, reinstated here from the IR so if he in fact is and it's going to be available for this game I really like him at this price point because I don't think Julio plays and um, AJ Brown has a ton and a ton of upside so really really like AJ Brown if he does end up playing now Foreman at 7-6 did have 22 carries that's a positive the downside is they did utilize two other backs um, so it kind of depends on how you think this game goes if you think Tennessee is going to be playing from ahead I think you can definitely look to a guy like Foreman, who I think Tennessee has shown he's going to be kind of the early down back. If you think Tennessee falls behind this one, I think he makes for a good fade because then the other running backs become um, more valuable there. And Julio Jones, I do not expect him to play. They said he's going to be a game time decision. He did not practice today. Um, he left that game and did not return. It's a hamstring. So I really don't expect him to play. If he does play, sure, you can play him in tournaments, but. Uh, he's kind of like a Mark Cooper to me. It's just he's always going to leave the field due to some sort of injury. So um, hard to feel confident there. Now, Westbrook at 5.4K. Whether A.J. Brown returns or not, I think, is a decent option. If A.J. Brown does return, it's a slight downgrade to Westbrook. But he's still going to play a decent amount of the game. Again, he played the most last game for Tennessee. He played 89% of the snaps. He'll play some out of the slot. Um, eight, six, and seven targets in three of the last four games. So I do like Westbrook. I think he's... Um, a skilled young player, and uh, I like that price. Chester Rogers at 4.8, so his snaps went down a bit. Um, I think he's playable, but at a similar price point, I think I would just rather go to Westbrook. I think it sees more opportunities. Again, the kickers, as I always say, definitely viable. Um, Tennessee and uh, San Francisco. So if you want to look to Reggie Bullock, or Reggie Bullock, wait, Randy? Randy Bullock. I'm <laughs> thinking NBA. Randy Bullock, he's definitely viable. The Tennessee Titans defense at 3.6K. Again, you can look to the defense. I, I hate playing the defenses in the show on site, but the way uh, the offenses have looked now the past month in the NFL, uh, I think you got to consider them. Now, tight end's interesting here. So Jeff Swaim uh, played 70-plus percent of the snaps last game, um, 74%. So um, he's the guy that's probably going to have the most opportunities, and he's still at a relatively cheap price point. So I think he makes for a safe option. Uh, the run, the back of running backs look interesting here too. So Hilliard, 
Um, got, again, they kind of split the, the snaps, but it was clear that Foreman was the earlier down back. So Hilliard played 36%. McNichols played 29%. Hilliard had four catches and six targets. Um, did have nine carries as well. So um, I think he's an interesting value play. And I like McNichols to a 2.2K, who are uh, going to be out there for a lot of pass down situations. So McNichols and Hilliard, if you think Tennessee falls behind early in this game, you're going to want to give a bigger boost to those guys. And then Ferkser, 2.6K. Again, they're going to use utilize three tight ends. He had two targets last week. He did play the least, though, of the three. Michael Prude is the cheapest. Um, he played the second most amount of snaps, but he's probably going to get the least amount of targets. And then, yeah, I'll mention Hollister. So he surprisingly played 70% of snaps last week. If there's no A.J. Brown and he gets called up again, then I think he's a, I think he's a decent value. Um so that's one to keep an eye on. Again, McMath, there's just no way this is a real person. Um, and that's it. Golden Tate, when he got signed to the um, practice squad, what was it, late November. So maybe there's a chance they call him up. Just keep an eye on that. Um, but, yeah, I think that's really going to do it for Tennessee, guys. Uh, so Tennessee, definitely the team uh, on the show. I'll say that's a little bit trickier. Uh, to break down because they're going to utilize three running backs. They're going to utilize three tight ends. There's question marks at the wide receiver spots. So San Francisco, more clear. Tennessee, a lot more question marks involved for this game on Thursday night. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for the video today. So again, if you have been enjoying the NFL content, just make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let me know who are you going to tomorrow um, in the million dollar maker or million maker again. Uh, drafting still offering big contests for the show on sites one million dollars up top so i will definitely be playing this one but thanks again guys i really appreciate all of your support and i will see you in the next video